The tools that are, make up Web 2.0 empower the consumer to become a publisher online. You know, just as a newspaper publishes content now, there's no different. Any consumer can publish this content available and make it available freely to anyone who chooses to find it. The other big difference, not only does it level the playing field as far as content creators, but it also allows two-way conversation. So instead of just me speaking at a consumer, a consumer now has the opportunity to speak back at me in a public way for everybody to see, whether or not they're visiting a blog and they're leaving a comment for somebody else to read, or whether or not they're rating my business on a service of, you know, how was the table service if they liked at a restaurant, or, you know, did, uh, did I get seated on the plane soon enough? I mean, we're basically taking all of this consumer input and allowing them to feed it back into the internet. Um, Web 1.0 was communication tunnels. Think of email. Email goes from one person to another person. It stays in a tunnel. Of course, you can obviously, I'm sure many of you have been part of those unfortunate reply all emails that seem to go on forever, right? So yeah, occasionally you can get an email that goes to 30 or 40 people, but for the most part, it goes straight from one person to the next person. I can ask somebody a question, they can answer it, and I've got the answer. That's great. It did exactly what it was supposed to. But what if somebody over here has the same question? Well, then they're going to ask that same person, that same person's going to answer it and send it back. So we've got these kind of communication tunnels where this information or this value stays in between two people or in between the people that are connected via email. Web 2.0 is very different in that the conversation happens in public. The conversation happens on the internet, in a blog, in a forum, on a Facebook wall. People ask these questions and they're saved there and it's just like asking a question in this group. Everybody gets to hear the answer to the question. So it's write once, read many. You know, it's not uncommon to see somebody return to a page that's years and years and years old, but somebody left some valuable information there a long time ago and people still value it today. So in that sense, Web, Web 1.0 was very much a closed-end type of communication. You know, it happened and then it was it. It was dead. Somebody asked the question, if you sent an email to somebody and nobody replied to you, you didn't get your answer, your question was dead. On the internet with Web 2.0, you ask a question in a group, you ask a question in a forum, it's there until somebody answers it. Maybe nobody ever does, but still, it could be there for years. Somebody can come along forever from now and answer that question. So the conversations don't really die. They can just keep going on forever. I had an example um, recently. Um, I left a comment on a blog. Most, if it, or those of you that, that may comment occasionally on blog posts, most of the time at the bottom of the blog, they'll give you the option to say, I want to subscribe to these comments. So if somebody says something after me, I want to know what it is. You know, send me an email that says, hey, somebody replied to what I said. I got an email the other day from a blog post that I had commented on about two years ago. Just out of the blue, somebody else found the same blog, read the same post, read the comments below it, and decided to add something else to it. It was kind of an interesting comment. Didn't necessarily add a whole lot of value to me, but it might add a lot of value to somebody else that came along. So when we think about the fact that these conversations really kind of can go on infinitely, um, you know, this is very, very different from the static publisher news story. It's on the internet for a few days, and then it's gone, or it's in their archives, and nobody ever sees it again.